is now Sunday in the game. Miss Kennedy is just doing a little bit of cleaning up around the house before she begins to prepare for Sunday dinner with her family. So on Sundays, I mentioned before, we do have dinner with our parents. And I thought I was going to have to change the time because Daniel now has to work on Sundays. But he actually gets off work at 3. And the dinner party is scheduled for 3. So we should be right on the money. So what we're going to do is, I, if I recall, um, I haven't done the dinner party in a long time. I'm pretty sure you have to have a garden salad and then your regular like main course meal. So I'm going to have Kennedy whip up some stuff and then put it in the fridge until it's time to head out. So let's go ahead and select cook. Her cooking skill is high enough to do like a caprice salad, but I'm pretty sure the event goals call for a garden salad. So we're going to have her do that and then... Let's see for dinner. I feel like she's going to want something gourmet to impress her mom. Um, let's do a pasta primavera. So while Kennedy is getting everything together, I um, wanted to show you a couple of little renovations we did. So you may notice they have a little bit more money now. I didn't cheat it. Uh, the money actually came from doing some renos. So... Previously with this build, like this little like corner had an extra wall and then there was like an extra door. And even though this was always set as the front door, for some reason when they would come home, they'd always come in here. Then they'd go through that extra door and just stand in this foyer for some reason. So I basically got rid of that foyer, deleted those walls, put some plants right here, put a um, umbrella stand, move this from where it was and then i shortened this bathroom this bathroom was obnoxiously long in the original build it had all the same stuff but then it had these two little like uh, toddler chairs in here so i when i deleted those there was this awkward gap so i was able to still leave basically all of the same furniture that was in here i did change out the window because the window was like the entire wall so we were able to give them room to have a little treadmill at home um so i got them the cheapest one we were able to keep the windows and put this cute little wall art up. Um, we got them a really cute doormat, which is very much Kennedy. Um, and then that's really it. Everything else um, stayed the same. So oof, we need to clean our counters. Where is she at? Oh, yeah. She even came out here to like do it on the counter because she knew it was dirty. So we are definitely going to have her um, clean the counters so cute so yeah Kennedy is actually really excited to have dinner with her parents she hasn't seen her parents or even spoke to them since the engagement party so she's really excited to get caught up and see how her parents are doing I've also gone ahead and set up some new lots in Windenburg that I can't wait for you guys to see. Um, since they both have, I mentioned before, they both have work from home careers. We have a lot of opportunity here uh, to just kind of see how things are. But for today, we did send Daniel to work and then I have him making connections. I really need him to make some coworker friends um, so that we can um, basically form a group for him like a Windenburg politicians group so I really want him to make some friends in his career and see how far we can go with that it's a hot day Kennedy really wants to take a dip in the pool she is such a pool girl she's a beach girl like they've been talking about their honeymoon and she really wants to go to Sulani personally you know Daniel is all about Silva Dorada but he knows Kennedy's not going for that. Not for the honeymoon. She'll go for it any other time. But she's going to want the glamour and lux luxuriousness of Sulani. Um, so, yeah, she loves to take a dip in the pool to cool off and just relax a bit with everything that is going on. But she is excited that because we have a little extra cash, we can do a wedding activity today. So, I'm thinking we're going to go ahead and open up our event planner while she gets out of the pool. 
and see what we can do today. Okay, so we're not gonna do the cake. But we can do, we're gonna buy flowers in person. I feel like a lot of this stuff, they're going to make um, them do together. So I'm actually not going to click on any of it. All right, so go here, Ken. Let's have you freshen up in the shower really quickly so you don't smell like chlorine. All right, so we are at the Bright family home. So this is Kennedy's uh, parents' home over in Newcrest. They were able to purchase this home when Kennedy was in middle school. So it's kind of her childhood home, but um, not necessarily where she was like born. So this is what the family home is looking like these days. They did go ahead and turn Kennedy's old room into an office already, which Kennedy is not mad at. So we're going to go ahead and mark off this make a group meal because we have already done that. So we're going to, let's see if we can force them to sit at the table. I don't know if we can. So let's actually call everyone, call to meal and eat. Let's see if everyone sits at the kitchen table. I really hope they do. I hope they don't like scatter around the house. Oh, her parents, Clifton and Anastasia. Oh, they are all sitting together. I am so excited about it. Her parents are thrilled. I'm not even going to click on them to make them talk because they're talking already. If I do, they're going to get up. But her parents are so thrilled to see them. They're like, you guys look so great. Tell us all about work. And so, of course, they're sharing about how their first week in the real world has gone and as in their careers and their parents are just so excited so. to hear oh look her parents that are flirting and he her dad is like see this is what you know why are you on the computer get off the computer see, this is what you know everlasting love looks like i'm so excited for you guys that you know you have this too and then we're gonna have him do it with this meal So at this point, Kennedy's mom was like, so tell us, how is the wedding planning going? And they both got to pause a little bit because wedding planning has been stalled. And Kennedy's like, well, you know, mom, we, you know, we made a huge deposit on the venue. So that was important. And they're like, yeah, so tell us when's the date. We need to put it on our calendar. We haven't got any safe dates. And she's like, well, we haven't been able to do that just yet. You know, we need an extra thousand dollars. So we're hoping to do so, you know, within the next couple of days. And her mom is like, you guys need an extra thousand dollars. Why wouldn't you ask us? Like, we are so happy to help you with the wedding. And Kennedy's like, mom, mom, you and dad don't need to do it. Like, and her dad is just like, that's my Kenny, you know, so independent. And we love that for you, baby girl, but you are our baby. We are going to help you. So her parents are going to give her a $5,000 donation towards the wedding. And Kennedy honestly cannot believe it. She is shook it. <laughs> she is shook it. She couldn't even fix her face to ask her parents for that kind of money. And honestly, she's like, look, only the best for my baby girl. I know what kind of wedding you want. I know what kind of girl you are because I raised you. You deserve all of it. And look, she's so happy. She's like, oh, you guys. Um, oh, like, this is her mom. But her mom is just so happy. And I'm pretty sure they just had a baby. So let's have her come take care of this baby. 
which this is not my doing, but I took them off of like my plate household. So now they're, you know, part of neighborhood story. So they're kind of just doing the most. So Kennedy and Daniel are down here chatting it up. And Daniel's like, oh my gosh, see, I told you. We should have been able to ask our parents. And Kennedy's like, yeah, you're right. I hear you. And he's like so excited. He's like, look, Kennedy, look at all the things that we can do now. Aren't you excited? He's like, yeah, like, you know, maybe we could take care of something for the wedding tonight. And he's like, yeah, let's actually pick a date. So we're going to go ahead and go into the calendar. I don't know if we can do this while we have an event going on. We may be able to. All right, so we're going to pick a date for the wedding, and we're going to put it two weeks into the future. Daniel should be able to take off work for this. We're going to do it on a Saturday. Okay, so we can't do it here. So Kennedy's like, okay, what do you, when do you want to have the wedding? And he's like, let's do it two weeks from now on a Saturday. Like, you know, right at the start of Winterfest. And why at the start of winter? Because we'll be able to get away for Sulani for the holidays. Maybe we could spend our honeymoon over Christmas in Sulani. And she's like, you know what? I could see that. Oh, it's a holiday. That's why I won't let us do it. It's the Olympics. Okay, so we'll do it on a Sunday. So we'll do a wedding event. All right, so for our son of honor, Jada did say yes. For our ring bearer, Derek said yes. So um, for our guest, we're going to select our mom, our dad, all of Daniel's people, Chelsea and Luke. And then we're going to exchange our vows, have toes, dance. I'm not even going to put cut cake because it literally never works. Walk down the aisle, throw rice. I'm just going to do polish. I'm not even going to pick a color. And we're going to have the wedding. Oof, I just remembered I don't have any wedding venues in this game. Okay, so we're going to pick the one wedding venue we have. I will customize it in time for the wedding. We're going to set our wedding for noon. Okay. And there we have it. So now that we've set a date for the wedding, Daniel and Kennedy both have this, like, weight lifted off of their shoulders. Like, her mom and dad are literally heaven sent for that five thousand dollar donation and trust and believe all of that money is going towards the wedding like every single cent is going towards the wedding because we still need to get wedding outfits and with this wedding nuptial mod like everything costs like it's it, we need we need outfits we need um our marriage license we need our flowers we need to plan for the honeymoon. The honeymoon fee was right there. It was literally over a thousand dollars for the honeymoon. So trust and believe, every penny will be spent. And it's crazy and mind blowing to Daniel. Interestingly enough, he wanted to ask his parents for the money, and he even did. He told his dad about needing a five thousand dollar deposit, and his dad threw it in his face if they didn't have it, and basically belittled him with a two hundred dollar, like nothing and her parents willingly volunteered this money and just said spend it how you need to we know our daughter we want our daughter to have the best and in this moment Daniel kind of wishes his his dad especially was just more supportive of him all right so what do we want to do now let's um Let's go get our marriage license. Let's do that. She had some bad coffee. <laughs> oh, poor kid. No, Luke, we don't want to hang out. All right, so we got the license and let's see what else we can get while we have a little bit of time.
Let's go get our wedding bands. Let's do that. Kennedy is back home from picking out Daniel's wedding band. So we're going to have her uh, come and change into her pajamas. She is going to use the restroom and then she's going to go ahead and get that work done for the night that she was thinking about earlier. She's going to file her court documents. Daniel, when he is done, he is going to do some laundry. Kennedy is feeling really confident as she is ramping up for the work week. She knows that this is her week to get a promotion and the next level is a legal secretary. She's so close, so, so close to getting to, you know, being able to get into the courtroom and, you know, representing clients. And she is just so excited about it. She's feeling so pumped up and amped up on this rainy Sunday night for the upcoming week. All right, so we are back. It is Monday afternoon. Daniel is just off of work and he is moving and grooving. He has been promoted again to community organizer. He will now make an additional $15 per hour for a grand total of $69 per hour. Daniel is not playing around, okay? Like, he is seriously trying to get promoted. And thank God for their parents' donation because they would not have had enough money for rent. Like, $2,300 is what was owed for rent. So let's check out... Oh, he didn't pay the bills. Let's check the neighborhood stories. We don't even know who that is. Uh, we don't want to hang just yet because we know Kennedy's going to want to do some stuff with the wedding. I want him to clean up like this lightning strike over here. Okay. Oh, well, Kennedy didn't get promoted yet. Her career is so much harder. So at this point, Kennedy is just going to freshen up a little bit and then her and Daniel are going to take care of the rest of the items on our custom nuptials checklist. This is mainly rabbit hole items, so I won't bore you guys with sitting here waiting for it to go down. Okay, you guys. We are back, and since the last recording, there's only been one sim day that has gone by in this game. And all I've had our couple do is go to work, do some little stuff around the house, you know, some of the boring things, just trying to get us along. And my intention, it's Wednesday afternoon in the game, Daniel has just gotten off of work. My intention was to pick back up tomorrow in the game, which is Thanksgiving. But um, since that 24-hour period, Kennedy did get her promotion at work. We had her work from home yesterday. So she got her promotion this morning to legal secretary. And um, we had Daniel go off to work. And then as soon as Daniel gets home, he gets an invitation from Luke to hang out at, what is this, ancient ruins. And I was like, okay. We why are we here? We gotta pick this this back up. We gotta pick this back up and see what's tea. Like, why is Luke inviting us out here to the ruins? So let's actually just follow him. Let's just see where he's going. Let's just see what he's about to do. And let's just play it by ear. Like you know, he sounded kind of suspicious on the phone call. You know, Daniel didn't really know what to expect. And where is he going? I don't think I've ever really been here before like this. All right. So let's just have them come over here to the dance floor area. Let's have them go over here together and start to just have a conversation. Like, what's tea? So let's ask about his day. Oh, Derek's here too. Okay, wonderful. So Daniel's like, hey man, like what's going on? What's up? Luke is like, hey guys, thanks so much for meeting me out here. And Derek's like, this is literally the middle of nowhere, man. Like what are you talking about? And <laughs> he's kind of like beating around the bush. He's kind of like not really getting to the point. And let me go ahead and control Luke so we can add some more storytelling. We'll call our brother back later. Um, 
He's like, okay, guys, when, since I got you all here, I need to make a confession. And he's like, a confession? And Derek is looking around like, what is this? Luke is like, look, there's something I have to tell you. And Daniel is just like kind of on the edge of his seat. He's really trying to understand what's going on with his friend. We're going to turn this off for a second. Daniel's like, hey, I want you to feel comfortable sharing anything with me. And Luke is like, I don't think you should marry Kennedy. She is just not a good fit for you. She is going to ruin your political career. The girl has secrets. She has things about her that you could just never understand. And Daniel is immediately going in. Like I said, he is not confrontational, but you are not going to talk about Kennedy. Like that is, you could talk about him to his face before you talk about Kennedy. Daniel's like, what is wrong with you? Why would you even say something like that? We have all been friends for so long. Like you've never had an issue with Kennedy until now. And he's like, well, I don't really have an issue with her. I just don't think you guys are a good fit. And Daniel is like, well, excuse me? Because you just said she has secrets I don't know about. What are these secrets? And why would you know about them? And he's just, Luke is just like, look, man, like, you need to understand that you are not making the right move. We're going to go ahead and get Derek involved. Derek is, is the key is the king of minding my business. This ain't got shit to do with me. So we're going to get him as well. And we're going to bring him down here and we're going to have him get in on Luke. And basically, um, we're going to have him come and say, you know, like from the outside looking in, this feels like some real hater type stuff. Like, like what's really going on with you? Like, Kennedy don't have no secrets. Like, what are you talking about? Like, we've all partied together, hung out together, studied together. Like, this doesn't make any kind of sense. You can tell him and Luke aren't even that close anyway. Derek's never really, like, trusted him like that. And so now, of course, Luke is feeling cornered. He is literally, like you know, ready to explode. And Daniel is kind of just sitting here in shock, really trying to understand, you know, what is going on. And he's like, I need to take a minute to cool off. And Derek's like, no, don't cool off. We need to get to the bottom of this. Like, this is messy. Like, what is going on, you know? So in this moment, you know, Luke needs to make a decision. Is he going to keep playing these games or is he going to tell the truth what are these secrets that he knows about kennedy and let's see if we have the option to talk about her um no i don't think we do with daniel but we did here so we're going to trash Kennedy and see what happens. But right now, Derek is just talking about how he's just like, this is not, this is not okay, man. Like, you need to tell the truth. Like, you feel like, you know, you're just like being a hater. Like, and that's just like, you shouldn't have to ask. You can say I'm a little bitter. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. We are seeing this friendship, like, implode in front of our very eyes. But the truth of the matter is, they know that Luke is not being very forthcoming, and they don't understand. So it's at this point that Luke just screams, I'm in love with her. And everyone just kind of sits there in shock. 
like what he's like yes i've been in love with her since the moment we all first met her and her friends but of course daniel you're so spoiled you always get what you want you made it clear that she was your interest and i literally couldn't say anything after that and daniel was like you make her you make her sound like some kind of championship prize like what are you talking about he's like if you were interested in her when we first met then you should have pursued her you didn't you sat on the sidelines i can't help it that we fell in love and the moment that we started dating any romantic interest you had in kennedy should have been gone because we're friends and luke is just not hearing it and Daniel was going back to what Luke said. Kennedy has some secrets. So Daniel is like, have you and Ken ever done anything? And he's like, no, no, we don't. And he's like, so why did you say she had some secrets? And he was just like, I, I don't know why I said that. I don't think she actually has any secrets, but I also just don't think she's good for you. Like she'd be better for me you don't even have the kind of time and energy to give her what she deserves and daniel's like what the what are you talking like he at this point he just can't even get a response off because he can't fathom this he's like you've been so focused on yourself your career all you do is complain about your family about all of these things when you've always been so privileged and spoiled and Daniel's like, excuse me, are you calling me privileged? Are you calling me spoiled? And Luke is like, man, please don't even play the race card. Like you came from a rich family. You always get what you want and you don't know how to make others a priority in your life. And at this point, Daniel is like so appalled, so angry so luke just shoved him and daniel is like don't ever put your hands on me again you don't want these problems you need to stay away from me stay away from my family you will never ever have my life and as he's saying this like daniel knows that like you know luke is dead wrong but this is like out of daniel's character daniel is not the type to uh, talk to people like this to threaten people to throw what he has in people's face like that's just never been him but luke is really sending him over the edge right now like he is and even notice like look how long it took for them to get into the red luke is really trying his patience there's no more need for words at this point it's hands it's hands and feet it's hands and feet <laughs> like there is no more words like you really tried to insinuate that our fiance was just this horrible person and we should leave her and she's no good for us. When it turns out, not Daniel losing. Oh no, we gotta we gotta do this again. When it turns out, you only wanted us to leave her so you could have her for yourself. Like what kind of garbage human being are you? Like, really? And then you'll notice, you know, you can't always control, like, who you're attracted to and your feelings. But he thought Daniel was a better person than that. Like, it's one thing to, like, be attracted to Kennedy. He knows, he knows who he's with. He knows she's beautiful and talented and smart. But he thought, go ahead, yes, we have won. We have won this battle. But he's just surprised that Luke is acting like this. Like, it feels like Luke is plotting right it feels like he's plotting so we're gonna go ahead and declare him as our enemy and after that we're gonna go home we are getting out of wherever this is we're gonna head home to our wife our fiance new enemy aghast how dare they accuse me of being unsympathetic if i cared before i sure don't now simmering rage daniel still feels a quiet fury beneath the surface that is so true triumphant won the fight 
you know, being loyal to his partner, period, you know, sad that he basically lost a longtime friend. Like, this is a lot for him. You know, he walking with his chest puffed out because, you know, he won and he defended his family and, you know, things like that. But he still just can't believe that something like this would happen. So Daniel has just gotten home. Kennedy was actually just chilling on the couch watching some TV and Daniel cannot wait until morning to bring this up. He has to talk to Kennedy about this now. So the very first thing we selected was to ask her about Luke. <laughs> hey, you know, has Luke ever said anything crazy to you? Made any moves on you? Scared, flirted like with you? And she's like, him. no, absolutely not. She's like, Luke has already been nice. He's been pretty cool. And at this point, look at his face. He's like, well, I have something to tell you. I had a discussion with Luke today and talked to him about what was going on. And he basically recaps with her the entire situation. And she is in complete shock. She's like, I, first of all, what? Second of all, I never knew Luke felt like that towards me. Like, I wasn't lying to you when I said he's never done any you know made a move with me you know done anything with me she's like he's always kept his distance from me and daniel's like well yeah now i know because he's always you know hated from a distance and been bitter about us from a distance and just kind of quietly hoped that we'd fall apart and kennedy's like but i can't believe he would like make up stories about me to get you to leave me and just assume i was going to fall into his arms and yeah it's at that this point where Kennedy's like, this is just too much. Like, you know, she's going to go ahead and give him a reassuring hug and just say, look, let's just get to bed. Let's not even stress about this tonight. We have Thanksgiving tomorrow. You know, maybe we should just do something small. Um, you know, do something small, maybe just us, um, to avoid any stress and drama. Um, I'm going to get up early and make all your favorite foods and we're going to have a great night. <laughs> And even though, you know, Kennedy has reassured Daniel, he has in the back of his head, you know, Luke's words, like to him, it still doesn't make any sense that Luke would make up these stories about Kennedy having secrets and things like that. Like, it's that particular line that's really sticking out to Daniel and is kind of lingering in the back of his head. I guess we'll find out at some point if, Daniel was really making it up or if it's true. <laughs>